Rusty Quill presents The Magnus Archives Episode 179 Accomplice The heat of the furnace curls the hair on Derek's arm. It burns in a way that is as familiar as it is stomach-churning. Like the end of a cigarette, or the flush of a childhood face as it tries to block out the noises, the shame of being told to stop lying by the policeman who plays poker with his dad. He tries not to touch the metal parts of his small workspace as it is hot enough to raise blisters. But everything is metal here. His spade is metal. His hammer is metal. The tracks are metal that lead the rusted metal cart towards his furnace. This load is full of children's toys. Not the sad and mouldy wooden ones he threw at his sister as a boy, but bright, colourful plastic that he recognises from his own daughter's birthdays, Christmases, happier times. The sight fills him with dread. Where did they get these? What has happened to Tilly? He wants to run, disappear into the night, calling her name, but he remembers what happened the last time he left his post. What the overseer took from him. His shovel digs into the pile of happy memories, and he tosses it into the flames, one grueling motion after another. The burning plastic fumes hit him, and for a moment he staggers, reaching out a hand to steady himself. His palm sizzles as it comes to rest on the furnace, and he draws it back with a stifled yelp. He knows what happens in this place if you draw attention to yourself by screaming. His shovel goes back into the pile and meets an unexpected resistance. Something soft and almost spongy. He knows the texture well, and as he pulls the spade away, the bright blood on it confirms his fears. Another sharp sting of panic washes over him, electric pulses of fear causing his muscles to lock in place for a moment. Then he begins to load the furnace faster, frantically hurling away anything blocking the view of the body, desperately hoping to see... It's not her. It's someone else. Derek doesn't know the man who lies in the cart. Lifeless eyes staring at him from a head split in two by a careless shovel blow. He pauses for a moment, then goes to his task, hacking up the corpse and loading it into the hungry flames. The smell hits him, sickening him as it always does, tinged with that cloying, greasy nostalgia. I got you. That's what Colin had always said to him when they were kids. And he had always meant it. When Derek needed somewhere to stay when his dad was on the warpath, I got you. When Derek needed a little something to take the edge off, I got you. When the lifeless body of Derek's father lay at the bottom of the stairs, limbs folded around the cricket bat he had hit him with, I got you. And Colin was right. He had. Words can't really express the gratitude Derek had felt as the body disappeared into the furnace of the junkyard where his friend Colin worked. No, friend wasn't a strong enough word. They were family in that moment. And they would always have each other's backs. When the police came hassling them, he had Colin's back. 
when some little dipshit didn't show the proper respect, he had Colin's back. When Colin needed someone by his side for a smash and grab, Derek had his back. And when one of them had to go down for three years, well, it seemed only fair. The rumble of wheels on old metal rails brings Derek back to himself as he sees the now empty, blood-stained cart rolling back and away from him, disappearing into the field of red-hot glowing metal. Another one would be coming soon, rolling inevitably towards him. What part of his life would he have to burn then? What thing he loved would he have to hurl into the flames? The apprehension is as familiar to him as the scent of burning hair. He knows what it means to wait and see what he has lost. The first time he got out, he had lost his job and his home. The second time he got out, he had lost his daughter. The third time he had lost the ability to walk the streets without being hounded by some bored cop turning out his pockets, desperate for him to throw a punch. But it changed nothing. He always had Colin's back. Something is coming. Derek can feel it. It's not the next cart. He knows that sound. It's quicker, more vicious. Panting, snarling, bloody feet speeding quietly over through the heat of the yard. A hatred, a deep, self-righteous loathing charging before him. It is the sharp end of the violence that has wanted him all his life. And Derek has less than a second to recognize her face before she begins to tear him apart. Another victim. Another hunt. The pain and terror courses through him. Derek is still aware as she toys with him, pulls bits from his torso and chews them with a hundred sharpened teeth. He is aware, though not perhaps alive. She's here, then. Basira, I, I... I didn't hear you. Uh, no. I figured you wouldn't when you were... busy. I thought you were keeping watch. I was. Watched you sneak away. Sorry. You apologise too much. <laughs> Martin says the same thing. Like he's any better. Why didn't you want me to hear this one? What? You weren't this cagey about the other ones, meaning you wanted to keep this one secret. Uh, um... Because this one was Daisy's victim. Yes. Didn't think you knew what the statement was going to be before it happened. I just had a sense of it. So, what? You thought I'd hear he was a murderer and I'd agree with her. Maybe I'd figure she was doing the apocalypse a favour by taking him out. I don't know what I thought. Sure. I don't know, all right? I was I was worried that if you listened, it might feel like an accusation. After everything we've already talked about, I mean, what good would it do for you to hear? What's in this one that you don't already know? People have their reasons for doing wrong. The system hurts everyone. It just seemed kind of pointless. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, I just wanted to avoid this conversation. Should have been sneakier then. Yeah. Never been my strong suit, has it? How many times have you been kidnapped at this point? It depends if you... Hmm. Say it. Depends if you count Daisy. So, you did hear it then? Yeah. What, uh... What did you think? Did it help? With what? I don't know. Me neither. Hey, 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 she's, she's, she's here. What, what, now? Uh, yeah, yeah, she just, she just tore into a guy who was, he was, oh, Yes, oh. we understand, Martin. You didn't think this was worth mentioning? I didn't notice, I was talking to you. Fine, whatever. Let's go. Uh. Is this 
a good enough angle. We can try and sneak round to the other side of the furnaces. But then the smoke wouldn't it's cover fine. us. Shut up. I just need to focus. All right. Oh. Take your time. I will do as soon as you shut up. just in case. Look, it's a tense situation, right? I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not a sniper. God damn it. Masira, are you sure you're up to this? It doesn't need to be right now. We can always back off, regroup, wait for a better situation, one where she isn't elbow deep in some poor sod's corpse. Don't do that. Sorry. What am I missing here? He knows as well as I do that the only reason we're even able to get this close is because she's busy with a kill. There isn't going to be a better opportunity. Now or never then? Yeah. I made her a promise. You need to be certain. I am. Would you stop staring at me like that? Like what? Like you've looked inside my head and you don't like what you see. If that's an accusation, then you're wrong. I don't do that. Right. Like you're suddenly given infinite power and no consequences. And that's when you decide to start respecting people's privacy. Is that really so hard to uh, believe? Yeah, John, it is. Guys, guys. If you have something you want to say, good boy, no, just say it. Look, I know it's hard and you have your reasons, guys. but it is not my fault that you can't bring yourself... Shut up! Both of you! What? She's gone. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, no. Get down! Daisy, out no! Out of the way! Uh, let it go! Get out of the way! Take the shot! No, you'll hit John! Uh, take the shot, Masira! Um. Masira, do it! Don't! You can't! Daisy, stop! Please! Masira! <laughs> oh, God. Daisy. Daisy, please let me go. Ah, ah, or not. Or not. Sarah. I know. But John. I know. Just give me a second. But Sarah. She knows who I am. She recognizes me. But Sarah. Daisy, come back to us. You can come back. Please. Masira, come, come on. What? Come, got to get them. I, sure, just let him go. <sighs> Uh, oh, John, oh, shit, 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 okay, 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 I've got you, I've got you. Ah, ah, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, you, just, you need to keep pressure on that leg while I, I, I sort this, um... Okay, Daisy, please. John, can you, can you do anything? I'm sorry I told you, she's, she's too deep. I can't do anything, not without killing her. Daisy, it's me. Come on, please. Partner. Come. Oh. I see. What? She... She wants me to join her. In the hunts. What? Could... Is that even possible? Yes. I can... Feel it. In the blood. Basira. I can't leave her like this. She's always had my back. Always. Basira, don't. Please. Partner. Come. 
Not now. Not after everything. Basira, no! I can't. Basira! Sarah, I... Shut up. I'm sorry, I, I know... Shut up. No, Basira, wait. Jo John's leg, Let Basira! Let go. Is it... Is it awful that I wish she'd recognised me? Daisy? Yeah, I mean... She was... We were friends there, sort of, near the end. We went through so much and it just... I wish I could have actually said goodbye. Would it have made you feel any better about any of it? I don't know. Maybe. It's hard to know how I feel about anything these days. We said our goodbyes to Daisy after the Institute. This was just... This was just dealing with all the stuff she left behind. I suppose. Come on. I need to patch that leg up properly. The last thing we need is a limp slowing us down. Uh, uh, of course, that's uh, assuming the bandages haven't transformed into snakes or something. Hmm? No, they're, they're fine. I'd forgotten we had them, to be honest. I packed them before I realised what a celebrity you were out here. <laughs> I was starting to think I'd never need them. I'm surprised you could hurt you at all. Yes, that came as a bit of a shock to me as well, actually. You didn't know? I didn't think to check, just sort of assumed it was safe. That's a pretty big assumption, John. Hmm, apparently. I mean, I know it sounds strange, but it... It felt right for Daisy to be able to hurt me. Dream logic again? Hmm, the resonances from our relationship before the change carried over and ah, ah. hold still how are you doing how do you think sure i'm going to stay here burn the body of course we can wait i still need to uh no get... you go on I'll make my own way to London. What? No, don't be daft. It's not a problem for us to wait while you deal with Please, it. Please, just go. Wait. Seriously? Basira, if you travel on your own, if you're not with us, I can't guarantee your safety. Good. Basira, getting yourself hurt isn't going to help anyone. It's just... something I have to do. You said follow the tower, right? Right. No, no, this is ridiculous. You could die. I'll do my best not to. This isn't a joke, Basira. Martin, Becerra. this is what she needs. No, no, it, it's... It'll, it's it'll help me. All going well, I'll meet you both in London. He'll know where to find me. So you won't mind if I check up on you sometimes? If you must. But don't overdo it. I don't like being watched. Understood. Come on then, Martin. What? So that's it? We just head off and hope you make it? Yeah. Why don't we rest on it, hmm? I know we all need a moment and, and John can barely Honestly, stand. Honestly, I'm starting so to feel better already. Just need to stretch it out a bit. Ugh. We're not doing this. Martin, please. You'd better look after yourself. I will. Come on. For what it's worth, I'm sorry it had to work out like this. I'm not.
The Magnus Archives is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. Today's episode was written by Jonathan Sims, produced by Lorianne Davis, and directed by Alexander J. Newell. It featured Jonathan Sims as the archivist, Alexander J. Newell as Martin Blackwood, Frank Voss as Basira Hussein, and Faye Roberts as Alice Daisy Tonner. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook or email us via mail at RustyQuill.com. Join our community on the Discord via the website or on Reddit at r slash the Magnus Archives. Thanks for listening. Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Nick Vega, Tyler Zuba, Pendragon, Becky Gregory, Rachel Meresman, Melissa, Connor Ferry, Wednesday, Briar and Brine, Oya, Omnia, Wonderwall Meme, Sasha Rajula S, Cynthia J, Izzy, William Hess, Megan Lim, Maggie Hoffman, Ms. French Name, Floating Space Trash, Andy Grimaldi, Erina, Michael Prideau, Naomi Taylor, Sin, Piper, Gabe, Nicole H, Jade Fire, Joyful Joyous Joy, Amelie Christine, Sindri Mjolnir, Nathan Benson, The Crit Show, Noah Ayers, Melanie Dolby, Ruby Diam, Haley, Hannah Meller, Skeller Chicken, Margaret, Emily Savage, Jesney Work, Gisela Navarro, Leah D, and Steve K. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash rustyquill and take a look at our rewards.